Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to The Nest. It's June 25th, 2020, and we're streaming live with participants from Africa, Europe, North America, Asia, and around the world. For those of you joining for the first time, I'm Jim Chu in San Francisco, and the goal here on The Nest is to connect entrepreneurs in frontier markets with angel investors worldwide. We stream live every Thursday and all episodes are recorded and available on our website, findthenest.org. Today, we are co-hosting The Nest with Nairobi Garage, Kenya's and Africa's largest co-working space. And we'll be hearing from two companies from Kenya. They'll be pitching to three angels, two new angels, Joel Michael and Mark Curia, and Vishal Agarwal returns for another round. We'll hear all about them in a second, but before that, I have a few important announcements. Next week on July 2nd, The Nest will be in Singapore where we'll host a session in partnership with the Living Labs Foundation. And we're going to focus on companies in Southeast Asia for the first time. Please note the new time. On July 9th, we will have a session in partnership with the Opportunity Collaboration and Jorian Wilkins from the OC will be our guest moderator. And then we're going to go to Bangladesh, where we'll host a joint session in partnership with the Bangladesh Angels. And with that, uh, let's launch our poll, our first poll. Where is everyone from? Can, can we get that poll up, please? Great. And then while we're doing that, let's go to some quick technical tips for today. Uh, for those of you in the audience, we want to hear from you. This is an interactive forum and we've left it open on purpose for questions and comments from everyone and anyone. So use that chat box, talk to others watching the show, make comments, ask questions, even make investments. But in the meantime, use that chat to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, which country you're from, and why you're here on the show. And please don't forget to mute yourself if you're not speaking. All right, so let's get going. To start off, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jim Chu, and I am based whoops, here in San Francisco, California. And I invest in startups and developed and frontier markets, both uh, on a personal basis and through Untapped, my company. Uh, the company of Untapped is to drive investment in technology to support entrepreneurs and innovation in frontier markets. Um, so if you're interested in innovation and frontier markets, uh, let me know. I'm at jim at untapped.com and you can find me on LinkedIn. So now over to the angels. Joel, would you like to start with an introduction? Absolutely. Uh, pleasure to connect with all of you. I hope I'm audible. Um, I have spent a good decade in the entrepreneurship ecosystem, um, running startups, advising startups, uh, facilitating investments for startups. Uh, this has been across uh, Europe, the US, Middle East, uh, India. Um, I did one project in Africa, which was the Econ Lights Africa project. Um, so I'm familiar with uh, that side of the business world as well. Uh, happy to connect with all of you and uh, hear more about these pitches. So, so I think many people are probably curious as I am. Uh, tell us more about Hyperloop and what do you do with Hyperloop and how is Hyperloop, uh, what's Hyperloop doing in India or in the so Middle that's East? Buzzword, uh, I'm sure everywhere. Uh, Hyperloop, as you guys are aware, uh, was a coin termed and uh, made famous by Elon Musk. Uh, the Hyperloop is essentially the fifth mode of uh, transportation, railroad, waterways, and airways being the first four that we're all familiar with. Hyperloop is the fifth, which is tube travel. Um, what we're intending to do is give people a new way of living, a new way of building cities, uh, connecting people faster, uh, and uh, building um, a transportation uh, mode which is sustainable, uh, eco-friendly, and doesn't really uh, disrupt land, essentially, uh, completely off the grid, uh, energy positive. In India, um, given the mass population, it's an absolute necessity. Um, so many people here, uh, India, to a lot of people, if you haven't been here, is pretty much like Europe, where uh, every state uh, it has its own identity, own culture, very different. And um, being able to connect 
uh, people together uh, in uh, one tenth the amount of time is the vision uh, while making a positive impact on uh, the environment. Great, wonderful. So are we gonna see Hyperloop soon in, in Mumbai? <laughs> Uh, I would love if Mumbai would have been the first place uh, because I'm originally born and raised in India. Unfortunately, though, uh, Dubai, uh, predominantly uh, the UAE, would be the world's first if uh, and when. Gotcha. Great. Well, thank you and <laughs> welcome to the show. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Over to you, Vishal. Hello everybody, my name is Vishal Agarwal. I run a diversified holding company. I'm an active angel. I have roughly 40 startups in my portfolio. I have some commercial real estate. I'm a late career hospitality enthusiast and trying to build some uh, hospitality assets. Um, in my former life, I was a partner at PwC and uh, ran the balance sheet for General Electric. Um, uh, I'm delighted to be on the, on the nest again. Thank you for the invite, Jim. Great. Welcome back. Glad to have you. And last but not least, Mark Korea from Korea Capital. Um, yeah. Hi, Mark Korea. I, I just want to say uh, I have known Vishal Agar for a very long time and can test everything in his bio and more. Um, so I'm uh, Mark Korea, born and raised in Nairobi. Uh, I work in early stage finance, looking for really disruptive technologies at the seed level. Uh, we have a, one of the first, I think one of the first uh, sort of active family offices in Kenya, the career capital, and we also do a lot of transaction advisory work. Um, we do that for big traditional businesses and startups. Um, so before that, I used to work in the development space uh, in Geneva with the World Trade Organization. Uh, and after that, I went to business school uh, to learn about disruptive technologies uh, in Cambridge, which is ironically a very old and stuffy environment. Uh -huh. gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, now you're doing the right thing in Nairobi. Very right thing. Great, excellent. And I, and I forgot to ask, so you, you and uh, Michelle know each other from way back. Um, have you guys invested together at all in, in Kenya? I, mean, I think well, it's upcoming, right? Surely it should well, be upcoming. Well, you know, maybe I'm showing my age. Moshiro's dad and I have invested together. Right? Ah. But, but, <laughs> yeah. but I look forward to investing with Moshiro. Right? Yeah, I, I'm waiting for my chance, for sure. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and Michelle, I, I hear that um, you've written a book. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Sure. So I wrote a book called Give to Get. It was uh, published in uh, March of 2018. It's uh, how to navigate your corporate. It was written for corporate guys, but so how to navigate your career. It made Amazon bestseller three categories. Um, and the, the, the principal ethos behind the, the, the thesis is the more you give, the more you get. And that's why it's called give to get. And it's really a, how you navigate uh, every aspect of your, your, your career life. Hmm. Interesting. How to buy it. Amazon? Yes. Kindle, Amazon, Excellent. online. Yeah. Now Great. Well, wonderful. Thank you all three of you for being panelists on this show. And I think we're, uh, we, get, we might have the results of the poll. Should we put that up? Yes, please. All right, well, it looks like we have a uh, really good representation from Africa as usual. And uh, we have a few people from Europe, uh, quite a few from North America, and even some from Asia. And very surprisingly, we even have somebody from Antarctica. Who's from Antarctica? <laughs> so please raise your hand. Well, we welcome you from Antarctica. We hope there's some investment opportunities there too. Fabulous. All right, so now moving on to the show properly. Uh, now to the presenters, Bernard and Joel. Uh, you guys are both online. We talked to you earlier. So before we get started, let's go over some quick rules. Each of, you, each of you will have five minutes. That's five minutes to present and another 15 or so for questions and hopefully some discussions on a deal, 15 and 20. So please note, we will cut you off at five minutes. So please help us respect the time so we can all have a good discussion. And with that, uh, over to you, Bernard from Code Yetu. Uh, and you're gonna tell us about improving the supply chain for retailers in Africa. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll hand it over to you. 
All right, thank you. Um, hi guys, excited to be here. Uh, just let me know once you can, you can all see the screen. Yes, we see your screen. Fantastic, great. So my name is Bernard Murunga. I'm the founder of uh, Cordier2. So my journey started uh, rather from a personal experience. Uh, my wife with her uh, friends uh, decided one day that they would make bulk purchases together uh, for fruits um, from, uh, a, from a vendor uh, within the city. So I saw a business opportunity uh, when at the end of the month, uh, we managed to save uh, between 10 to 20 percent on our gross groceries shopping through uh, bulk purchases. So we, uh, I saw the opportunity of converting that into a business uh, that would help many more households buy more uh, for less money um, and also support retailers make, in making more margin from uh, bulk purchases. And in the long run, uh, we will then um, support uh, manufacturers in reducing their uh, payment cycles and providing them with market intelligence. So our solution was uh, a digital platform that would allow uh, peer groups to uh, access affordable and quality products um, uh, affordably. So how our platform works uh, is very simple. So a uh, shopper goes in, um, logs into the platform, um, looks, uh, selects the essential commodities that we want to purchase, invite their peers, um, split the bill amongst themselves proportionately, and nominate a drop of point, all right? So um, that, is, uh, in, uh, that, that is made possible by our connections with manufacturers. So we, uh, we create contacts with manufacturers and work with the existing, uh, the existing distributors to supply our peer groups uh, with uh, the commodities that they would want, all right? So we have uh, pretty much three uh, sources of revenue. One is uh, through product promotion uh, on behalf of the manufacturers. And then uh, we also have a margin uh, that, we, that we have on our products, as well as a logistic fee that we charge for every delivery. So uh, the other future revenue streams that uh, uh, we see uh, coming up in the midterm, which are commissions from loan, gi loans given to uh, retailers and shoppers uh, on trade to, to, to purchase their products, and also um, insur insurance premiums, all right, that are sold to um, our retailers. So, so far um, in the beginning um, of this year, precisely around February, we man, uh, to now we've managed to serve 200 retailers um, uh, with uh, uh, making 101 deliveries from one distributor based in one region in Nairobi. Um, and uh, through our experience over the last few weeks or months, we've managed to attract um, and uh, uh, signed on contracts with uh, two insurance companies, um, APA Insurance and APA4, and also managed to partner with uh, 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 POS and uh, mobile application uh, um, technology company based in India. So um, in our space, uh, pretty much we have a lot of players, um, but all of them, none of them serves both segments, retailers and consumers. So uh, Glover and Copia, would, uh, a few would serve only cost customers and, others, and, and the other few would serve only retailers. So our uniqueness is that we serve both. We are hybrid of serving both retailers and uh, customers um, as, as well as providing that uh, bulk purchases. So um, we are looking for an investment of 100,000 um, that would enable us um, reach more families and serve them uh, by reducing their, their costs or their, their budgets on monthly expenditures. And also that, so that we can reach um, the greater region of Nairobi um, and, um, and uh, the rest of the... Oh, we may have, may have lost Bernard in that. Okay. Oh, he's back. Go ahead. 
Hello. So yes. we have a. T so combined, uh, our team has uh, experience of over 50 years in uh, retail distribution, marketing, and strategy that we are confident will enable us um, will enable us uh, make 147 deliveries of bulk products to um, around over 3,000 customers within one year. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for respecting the time. Appreciate it. Now over to the angels, questions, comments, and please, I encourage the audience to pitch in with questions and comments as well. Um, if I can maybe just uh, raise my hand to just kick us off. And, and sorry about the power cut, uh, Bernard. Sorry, okay. Um, we're handling it well. Um, so I, I guess my first question is on, on competition, and I was going to ask it from the beginning. But I, I think maybe I, I don't quite agree with your assessment of you being by far the most innovative or the only innovative um, player in that competition space. Um, and I, I think, do you think maybe you're discounting a bit the work that, uh, you know, people like Daniel at Soko Watch or, you know, Jumia are doing to, to provide services for their suppliers? I think they, they spend a lot of money and time and energy on giving good service to their suppliers. So what, what is your your assessment of their supplier um, services? So, so let me, let me uh, I, I, thank you for that question. The major difference that we have with Soko Watch and Jumia is that they own inventory. That, that places them in direct competition with, uh, with major, you know, traditional distributors who have been there for years and who have been serving manufacturers for quite, quite a long time efficiently. Um, so what we, what we do is we support the traditional supply chain, we support the uh, traditional distributors and offer them a platform to compete with uh, Soko Watch and copiers and so on um, that play in the same field, who own their own inventory. I'm sure you will appreciate that owning inventory comes with a lot of challenges, all right? So we would rather, we would want to focus our expertise on what we can do best, which is market marketing and retail distribution to support our manufacturers. Bernard, there was a request from the audience to show the metric slide again. Could you go back to your metric slide? Sorry, there's a blackout, so I'm trying to, <laughs> to, to, to manage everything as we move on. All right. Like Mark said, I think you're handling it very well. So please, we'll, uh, we'll bear with you as best we can. Okay. Vishal, what are your thoughts? Or questions? Well, you know, uh, Bernard, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for your presentation. There's a couple of things that I, I'm not clear on, right? So first, um, would you speak to the acquisition of a customer? How, how are you acquiring these people and what is it costing you? So that's kind of the one piece I, I didn't quite get. The other piece that I didn't get is the whole insurance play and your partnership with APA, for instance, right? If you address those two, it'll help me kind of, you know, focus on page slide, uh, page 12 as, a, as kind of a next thing. But let me leave you to answering those two bits first. Bits. This is not funny. Did we lose him again? Yeah, I'm using my phone, but even my phone is not connecting. Ah. Okay. But, but I, I could respond. I'm um, Robert Karanja, uh, uh, co founder in uh, Code Year 2. Um, so, if correct, the question was no. what's the customer acquisition cost? Yep. Sorry? Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going, Robert, please. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So, I, I think on that no. one, um, I can't the, hear you I, I don't have the exact numbers with me. Hello? But I can I can very quickly speak to the issue of the insurance companies and and um, what was did you ask? So so the basic idea here is that of course we can be able to provide um, lower cost to the consumer uh, on the FMCG goods that we, that are offered on the platform, uh, rather than giving the hundred percent of the benefit of lower cost. We would like to be able to share, uh, to, to withhold some of that, uh, just like you see in the loyalty schemes, and to be able to allow people to have savings that can lead to add up to insurance premiums. 
and uh, some of the partners that we are partnering with, for example, Apia Poor and Prudential, uh, they have been able to provide very uh, affordable uh, insurance products such as um, uh, ho uh, hospital cash, whereby rather than medical expenses, if you if you if you are admitted in a hospital, uh, you're able to make a claim. Uh, so, so a hospital cash cover is about a thousand shillings. You're able to make a claim for a thousand shillings for every day in hospital for 30 days. Um, so simple, uh, affordable products that can speak to the uh, health issues. Uh, on top of that, they're also providing a COVID-19 cover, for example, that uh, even with the hospital cash alone, at a thousand shillings, you get the COVID-19 cover for free. Uh, so if you are uh, diagnosed with COVID-19, you get a cash out of 10,000. If you are uh, in the government uh, quarantine facility, you're able to get uh, you're able to make a claim of 2,500 shillings per day. Uh, if you are admitted in the ICU, of 5,000 shillings per day, up to a maximum of 30 days. So, so being able to provide uh, mechanisms so that people can afford uh, 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 financial products that can, in essence, uh, speak to the resilience within the COVID-19 uh, space, uh, um, within this COVID-19 disruption that we are, we are all facing. So that, that's one. Uh, if you can remember the next question. So, so Robert, just on that, right? Because I'm not quite sure I totally get it, right? So you're, you're an okay. aggregator of FMCG goods. So I could get my Pampers that I want to purchase yep. at a discount because I saw that on one of your slides. But you're also selling me insurance and financial products. Is, is, that, is that how I should understand this? I also want to echo my thoughts on that. I've been really wanting to ask this question as well on my, my concerns on this. It sounds like it's a bit of an everything app. Yes. Uh, maybe not so clear. Why? Okay. So what I was saying is that we want to be able, it, this is a social enterprise. So we are, we, are, we are, of course, looking at the bottom line, but we're also looking at how can we have social impact. So we're intentional about social impact. One of the ways we are doing this is by if we if you are able to get a five you know let's say it's a hundred shillings uh, discount uh, on a on a certain purchase, um, rather than giving you that entire hundred shillings, can we give, can we give you ninety percent of uh, ninety shillings um, discount with and and uh, hold back ten shillings, and with time those ten shillings can add up to being able to uh, go towards. Uh, financial products like insurance or micro pension, things like that. The basic idea here is that we will have partners that can be able to, uh, we can be able to partner with that would want to leverage this platform to also reach this consumer. And we're able to become an aggregator uh, in a sense because not only we, we are not only just trying to create a value in terms of you can buy more for less, but we're also saying, hey, uh, how about being able to still achieve, you know, the, the bargain that you're looking for, but uh, put something aside that can actually speak to resilience. And, and so we've talked to different people, the retailers, for example, they're very interested in insurance products to, to, to cover their businesses. Uh, and so Apia Poa, Prudential are, you know, offering those kind of products. And from the savings, it's easier to be able to actually uh, pay premiums as opposed to when the money is in your pocket and you have all these competing needs. I, I, I don't know that that makes sense. Does that, does that, does that answer your question? Uh, uh, Joel, Joel, do you mind if I ask another question that might dovetail please, please, into this please, one? Please, 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 please go ahead. Um, so, so I've seen that you guys have uh, $5,000 in sales so far. Um, I mean, the question would be, how long has it taken to reach that point? How much of that is this insurance product? How much of that is your core product? And does that data validate the fact that you should have an insurance product as part of your retail product? So good question. Yeah. So, so I will say it is a bit early. Uh, what we've done so far is really a pilot. Um, when the COVID-19 and the shutdown came in, we, we basically suspended uh, most of our activities to be able to uh, and took that opportunity really to focus on building the platform. So all the intelligence we gathered as we were uh, serving the, 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 the working with the distributors, uh, with manufacturers, and with uh, 
the, the, and, and of course, within the logistics of, of delivery, we took time to now take, take that into uh, building the Cordia to 2.0. Um, so the 5,000 was achieved in a space of about barely two months. Um, and, and this is without any major launch, no advertising really. It's really going to talking to uh, retailers and saying, hey, this is who we are, this is what we do, would you be interested? And you see value in this. And, and, and so as I'm saying, the, the response has actually been really great. Uh, we, are, we are quite excited with um, the, the feedback we've gotten from the market. Uh, both from the manufacturers uh, and also from the retailers. The only thing we've not done yet is to take this out to the market in terms of the consumer, but we want to basically do so with a, with a revamped platform that will be rolling out in, in, in about a month or two. So I, I see that uh, Bernard Hello. is back as well. Welcome back, Bernard. Can you, can you yes. hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, yes, you can. Great. Wonderful. Yes, I can. I'm really sorry for that. Um, no, it's okay. Uh, I think we're, we're all, right. all familiar with uh, blackouts. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So, uh, any other questions? Joel, do you have any questions uh, or comments? Um, yeah. Uh, so, I'm, in, I'm sort of in agreement with both uh, the other angels as what they, the points they've highlighted. One, um, you know, while while there is competition in the space, I, I don't think, you know, you can still be a, a Pepsi to a Coca-Cola. You don't necessarily have to be the market leader. So there is a lot of room for you to, to enter the space. But I just think you're going to market with too many products. I think it, there is no niche. You, you aren't defined is, is what I would say could not, again, as one person's opinion, it could totally be your asset. But I think it's a longer marketing cycle. It's a longer brand positioning cycle. It's, you know, Amazon still was known as the bookseller before they became the everything seller. So I'm just saying, you know, um, create your brand identity before you start adding phases, it's just a more sustainable growth model in terms of mm -hmm. defining who you are. It, it helps from both aspects. A, a consumer would be able to relate to you better and would appreciate an additional category over time. And an investor would also be able to identify what he's investing into. So again, just my opinion. Um, also, I'd, I'd like to understand from a question side of things, you know, what's your biggest expense? Where do you, I see the tech is outsourced, if I'm correct. So uh, what's your biggest yes. expense right now? I mean, if, if you were to raise, you, you were to get your ask, where is the major portion of the capital being deployed? So, uh um, I, I think it was, so, yeah, go ahead. Go. So our major, um, the, most of the funding will, uh, funding will go to developing a logistics infrastructure, um, as well as uh, marketing and scaling uh, to other regions within Nairobi and the nation and um, uh, uh, with the aim of reaching the rest of uh, the neighboring countries. Okay. Let's, when you say warehousing, I'm sorry, logistics infrastructure, is that particular to warehousing or does that include delivery? Delivery. It includes uh, delivery. Um, since you guys have outsourced tech, have you considered outsourcing the element of delivery? Yes, we've considered that. Um, uh, we've, yes, we've considered that. Um, it's, it's actually a viable um, um, approach that uh, 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 we've considered. In fact, we started by, we currently leasing out, leasing bikes to deliver, uh, to make deliveries um, to our customers um, through our trade developers. Uh, but the, the challenge is in the long run, we see it being costly. So uh, as a way of reducing that cost, it, we, will, we, we see as um, considering a hybrid of both, owning some part of lo the logistics and um, leasing um, the logistics as well. So 100% in the long run, it, it makes business sense to own uh, every piece of it, including your tech at some point needs to be in-house. Otherwise, you know, you're giving yes. away your major asset. Uh, in the same way, I'd say, you know, if you can hold that cost of outsourcing logistics, I mean, you can outsource logistics and, and cut that cost. 
you would rather put that now in customer acquisition, like Vishal was saying, what's your cost for customer acquisition? If that is better spent there, uh, you can always phase your series A to acquire a delivery company or to partner with a delivery company on a, on a better revenue share model. Uh, I just think, you know, the key here is to one, establish who you are in a more defined niche, and two, is to, is to spend the money on, on one element which is to build the brand and get customer acquisition. Your traction, if you focus, uh, could be a better win in the long run. So, so what I think I hear from all the angels is, um, I think there needs to be a bit more focus. And you know, clearly down the road, you, can, you do need to do the entire value chain, but uh, in order to make yourself stand out, there needs to be more focus. I hope that was a good summary. Um, any other questions or comments from uh, the angels or the audience? If not, then we can maybe move over to uh, feedback from the angels on whether they think they would like to continue the conversation. No? Okay. Well, over to the angels. Who would like to start? Um, Jim, let me go first. Um, look, Bernard and Robert, uh, I, th I think that there's work to be done here. I, I, feel, I feel that what you're pitching us is muddled, right? So, so the, you've already got some feedback, hopefully, from the conversation you've heard so far in terms of business focus. I'm worried about customer acquisition. I don't understand the delivery bit. I find your margins to be really suspect. I, I think the revenue of $80,000 a month is 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 good on paper and we'll probably stop there you probably need the help of a incubator and accelerator okay so i think you need to go to like a startup boot camp a y combinator a mess a some version of that and be able to appeal to them that you have what it takes for them to work with you to deliver a post money accelerator valuation of a million dollars. Okay, so when you come out of that accelerator, that's when you're a million dollars. I'm not even going to talk about valuation. I think you need to do all those bids before you can stand on your feet and say that you're worth a million dollars. Um, so I wish you luck. This is too early for me. I'm a late seed plus investor, um, but sort of interesting idea, but a little muddled. And, and on that note, um, Vishal is connected to a couple of startup boot camps. Um, if you need some connections with some uh, startup accelerators, uh, let us know. We, we do have some connections to some, so please. For sure. Get in touch. Um, if I can then go next, um, I, I think that might be a good idea because I want to echo a lot of what Vishal said. I completely agree with that end point there where the next step should be to go to an accelerator. Um, I think just getting some people to look at the ins and outs of your assumptions, um, the way you plan to run your model, to just maybe give this some roots, I think might, is definitely the right call to validate this. Like, like Joel said, there is space in the market, but I think, you know, based on this pitch, there's, you know, I think a relatively rudimentary understanding of the competitors, what makes them strong, what makes them hard to go against. Um, I think probably my biggest shake was when I saw you, sell, you place yourself that high on the innovation scale versus versus some pretty interesting players. Um, I think also, you know, refining the pitch. If you're going to compete, you need to understand who you are, what makes you different. Um, if you can figure that out, you have a reason to stand in the market and say, this is this is code yet to. Um, I think, right, it's super early in terms of your revenues. You said it's only been two months. You guys have been making money. That's even great to make it this far. Uh, that's with some things going on. That's good. But, you know, get some thinking, you know, around, you know, all these deep dives and all of your assumptions. Uh, and then, and I think it's a very marketable company. If somebody wants to jump in now, you know, maybe in, in work with you guys to grow, it'd be a great opportunity for, for them to get a good investment early. Uh, but I think uh, for us, perhaps it's, it needs a bit more thinking uh, before, it, before we can do this. Thank you, Mark. Joel? Uh, well, Look, I won't comment on the on the valuation because again, valuations is one's perspective. If you guys think it's a million dollar company, it is a million dollar company to you guys. Um, what I'm saying is, um, I, I think you're coming with a good intention. It is, um, 
It is a startup to help people, to benefit people. Um, I, I agree that accelerators uh, are a good helping resource, but uh, I still think you will have gotten a lot of work done. It's not like you don't have your groundwork, you've got your traction, you've got, um, you know, you've got market feedback, validity, everything. What, what I would recommend as a quicker cycle um, is if you, if you delay your, your seed or pre-seed round by a month or two, work with either a mentor or an ad, ad, advisor who comes on board for maybe even 1% even or 2% of your company and is genuinely vested because he's either got the know-how or he's got the right connects to help you. You just need a basic polishing. Uh, the, the base work is there. So if you get that one person, again, super happy to, to work with you guys and mentor uh, in any way, but um, if you're able to get that one or those two people as part of your core team, I think you'd be in a much better position to uh, raise your around 30 to 60 days later. Great. So I heard um, some uh, opportunity for mentorship there. That's wonderful and great advice. If I could just for, for a moment just jump in and, and sort of advise the founders that what Joel said really touches a chord with me. And I feel give away a little bit of your company to someone who's willing to work with you and help you before you take the next dollar from your grandfathers, your mother, your aunts, your uncles, because you're going to burn their money if you don't get help. Great advice. Great advice. Well, and there might be some people in the audience today that might be interested in uh, Working with you guys, the FMCG is a great area. There's obviously loads of innovation that's still possible and it's a big market. So I hope there are some that uh, might be interested and hopefully get in touch with you. But um, Joel, we'll definitely put you in touch with uh, the team and uh, hopefully there's a further conversation. Super happy, like I said, I, I, I see it's coming out of passion, it comes from a good intention. I'm always happy to help and support in any way. Right. Robert Bernard, thank you very much for braving the blackout and coming back and doing a team effort. And thank you for taking the time to pitch. All right, over to Joel. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Before we get going on that, uh, let's, let's check out the poll. Can we show the results of the poll, please? So, so we, we see that uh, similar to the angels, uh, I think it's still a little early for, for a lot of folks. Uh, there are a few people that uh, indicate some interest at lower levels, but uh, yes, it's, it seems that um, there's a little bit of work to be done before another round of fundraising. Thank you both for taking time to present. Thank you. Over to you, Joel. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Joel Masharia. I'm here to present Motige, which is Africa's first one-stop digital solution for vehicle management. So a bit of background, um, in 2017, I owned a, a troublesome car, that's a Mazda RX-8, uh, that led me to spend so much time in the garages and sourcing for parts. So um, after a while, my family and friends are asking me for help um, to be, basically be able to take the vehicles to the garage and source for parts for them. They in, they in turn basically referred their friends and that um, for that reason, we were able to charge them a the friends a convenience fee to be able to take the vehicles to the garage. And then courtesy of that, we were able to organically grow and we grew very rapidly and we were able to realize there's a business opportunity here where we could basically um, solve the problem that most vehicle owners have. So the problem I tend to address here is, um, or the problem that car owners basically have are, it's access to service providers, these are MECs and, and part shops as well as reliability of the service that's going to be offered, as well as um, the, the, the ability to get convenience for the service that you want to get on the, on the, I mean, from the service providers. And that translates into, you know, basically time that is spent in the garages and the cost for that. And we also notice that they have, there's, no, there's no way of collecting data about, you know, everything that has, that has been done or data about the vehicle. So Motiga took approach to basically try to solve that. And then we decided to solve that is essentially by providing an IoT device that uh, users can, are able to purchase and plug into their device and to their vehicles. And then we register them and onboard them. And then they are able to access our ecosystem, right? So this is through mobile apps and a dashboard. 
and then that gives them access to what you're calling multi parts which is our parts e-commerce platform where they can we aggregate parts providers as well as a multi service where we basically aggregate again um, different service providers for repair and maintenance and as well as our mathematics which is our vehicle telematics solution so the way it works is we basically charge a, co a commission for the parts and the service and we charge a subscription model for the iot device that uh, we give to our customers and for our partners we basically charge them an api call to just be able to pull out data and do much more with that data so the kind of market size we're looking at is um, in kenya we have 600 million dollars worth of repair and maintenance done and in africa we are looking at 27 billion and globally we're looking at 5 trillion and this is according to uh, the bureau of statistics and mark you this this grows by 27 percent uh the competitive landscape looks like uh we have very segmented uh service providers on our platform and all of them give different different services right so Motiga is the only one that's aggregating all of them and being able to give you much more information, much more services, and, and we're able to consolidate the market by basically providing the hardware and the software for the platform. So the awesome team that's bringing you this is myself. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO. Uh, my background is basically in technology, building and helping startups scale in either CTO level or you know, just advisory. And I'm also a very serious car enthusiast in the ecosystem. My co-founder is Ian Bote, he's a, an automotive engineer and he's part of the, Vol, the, the team that created the Volvo's current design and also the, the first East African SUV that's, that's Mobius. Uh, and he's also worked in a mobility as a service business model at Polestar. We have a bit of traction. So the way we've decided to show this is just on the B2B side. So essentially from, from the left, you'll be able to see Toyota Kenya, which is one of, uh, uh, one of the companies that we signed an, an agreement with and we're able to provide them 200, over 250 IoT devices that they're able to use on their platform and as well as Swivel, which is um, uh, an Uber for buses in Kenya. And we are, we are currently about to start servicing their more than 2,160 of their vehicles. And they close deals uh, quite a few, but then we decided to show two. That's one in Tanzania, that's MMT, that does jet fuel fuel transport for the UN in Congo, as well as uh, Apollo Tours, which does uh, car hires. And the fleet size here are just quite huge. And the pending companies that we are, we are about to finish signing up with are Honda and Posta in Kenya. So our financials are quite interesting. So what you find in our platform, in our services, or in our market is our sales are quite high in terms of the devices themselves as well as the subscription and our expenses are quite low in terms of the platform because it's a custom built platform and that makes our markup or the profits quite high and our margins are over 60 percent so our current ask is two hundred thousand dollars and that will give us 12 months runway and we are prepared to offer like a convertible note at 10 percent interest and we are, we are giving a 20% discount on the shares and the maturity period is supposed to be three years. How we plan to spend this money is basically on OPEX um, and product development and CAPEX as well as marketing. So I'm just gonna to go to the key metric side, slide as well as the net ask. So if you look at the key metric side, we, you'll be able to see that we have quite a number of customers as well as revenue that we've generated in the last uh, two years um and these are monthly revenue as well as the margins are usually 60 percent and we have a very low churn rate and we've so far we've been i've been able to put in thirty five thousand dollars worth of my money as and we burn five thousand five hundred which gives us three months runway so far and we we expect to break even in two years um having signed a hundred vehicles on the platform generating us a revenue of more than five hundred thousand dollars and in the last round uh, in the in the angel investor we were able to like just give a valuation of one million dollars um, but for the current round based on the the traction and all that we we're able to you know push that to four million but we we're able to give 20 percent discount and the company was incorporated in kenya in 2018 um but particularly to the nest what we are looking for is basically a 
half of that amount, which is 100,000 shillings, I mean, $100,000. And that we are able, I mean, we're, we're willing to give 10% in a convertible note. And uh, part of this, part of the current round, which is $200,000, we've already gotten $60,000 committed by, by a few angels. And what we want to use that money for is basically manufacture of I, our very unique and advanced IoT device that's a plug and play and enhance the, the features on the product as well as uh, the addition. And the soft task on our end is basically just introduction to fleet companies as well as telematics and machine learning experts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joel. Over to the angels for questions or comments and the audience, please. So I'm, I'm happy to kick it off. Um, Joel, uh, guys, that was a very, very strong pitch. I think that's actually a very strong business. Very, very interesting. Um, so I guess I also one comment I'd make is I think on your sizing of the market for, for Kenya, maybe less, more so than Africa and, and globally, the number might actually be smaller. Uh, I mean, might, might actually be larger. Yeah, than the 600 million that you have there because a big part of the repair space is super informal and super fragmented, right? So the Kenya Bureau of Statistics is grabbing a lot of this from, from formalized companies who are doing this. Um, I think that's what's really exciting about the repair space. So it speaks to a lot of scale in your business. Um, I guess all the questions I have are, are, you know, are soft plug questions because it's quite good. I mean, could you tell us about the, the IoT devices and the unit economics of that? And maybe some of the profit linked to that. So is that profit a one-time profit or is it, a, um, is it a running total? And if so, over how long? So just tell us about the unit economics. Okay, cool. Um, so essentially we buy a device at um, $60 or all the way to $100 based on the MOQ. And we are able to sell those devices at uh, depending on the type of service that they want. So we we're able to give so many features that is driver behavior, location, fuel management, and and a, and a lot more features. And based on the feature and based on the type of customers, we are able to mark up that to over one hundred and fifty dollars per device, right? So the markup is quite huge in terms of the device. But now our unique a unique value proposition is on the subscription side because we are able to give more data to these particular customers who have a fee size in terms of the, the utilization of the resources and all that. And now with that, we're able to charge them a, a subscription fee per year. That's per device, right? So for, for instance, I'll give you an example. Of we the, the lowest we charge is, is $50 for the year. And the maximum we've charged so far is $3,500 per year. Uh, for the devices based on the features that they require. Um, Jim, uh, may I go next? Yes, please. Yes. Will Jim, you, jump in. Look, so I understand the parts in the repair. Okay, I'm a little old fashioned. I understand the parts in the repair. The tracking the rescue and data from a revenue standpoint seems like window dressing to me. Explain to me the device and the subscri subscription bits. Why would I buy a device from you and what does it do for me? And why would I subscribe to anything and what, what do I get in return? Just explain that bit to me. I understand buying parts and I understand buying repair services if you're able to get me reliable stuff. That, that I get. Yeah. But explain yeah. the device and the IoT and the telematics and, and the subscription bits to me. Okay, cool. Um, just give me a minute. I think my window just... Uh, why wouldn't you just sell? Why wouldn't you just sell parts all day long as an aggregator online? So essentially, the way we do it is, um, and, and there's a reason to this, right? So when we started the business, it was purely out of need, and that grew. So what we realized quickly was, um, most car owners in Kenya either basically have a Mac to go to but do not have like a parts provider, right? So the Mac will tell you, we need to change this number of items, right? But that is not based on any data from, you know, from, from the Mac. It's, it's based on, you know, uh, their own discretion. So what we decided to do is essentially now, how can we then give visibility to the customer, essentially? And what we figured out was we, we have very unique IO, IoT devices, which are able to pick up you know, ECU data from the vehicle and be able to translate that into 
you know, error codes on the vehicle, and that translates into what the MEC is supposed to replace. That's for instance, right? So um, essentially for our platform, what we want to basically be able to do is one, it's give access to these, you know, vehicle owners and also like connect in our ecosystem, we have, we aggregate all the service providers, right? So we have a bunch of uh, part shops in, in the ecosystem, which, which are able to essentially, you know, like give very genuine parts and then what most of these users don't have is access to that kind of information. So what we do is we get catalogs from part shops and list them on our side. And that we, we're able to push to the customer and the customer is able to make a decision. So by the time our, one of our customers who's, who, who's bought an IoT device, courtesy of the fact that we have a whole ecosystem, right? That's, that's our unique, you know, that's our mode, for instance. So the customers are, are able to understand that they have access to the most qualified, the most you know reliable, the most you know uh, accountable you know like service providers on the platform, and that is courtesy of what the offering for Motiga is. I don't know if that answers you. So, so are you saying that you could tell a pro box owner that yeah. His device that he buys for you from you for fifty dollars makes his Pro Box yeah. as good as my X 5s onboard computer would diagnose my X five. Would that? No, no, no. I, I think I saw so, Ferraris in the picture, so as good as a Ferrari. Or, yeah. <laughs> so the, essentially, what we do to Pro Box, like we we our solution is usually like versatile on, on some level because. For ProBox owner, what essentially we'll do for him is tell him like, look, um, how many times have you gone to the garage, for instance, as, as part of the you know Q and A for for us, and he'll tell you like, I've gone a hundred times to change my shocks, my suspension system, whatever it is. Now we ask him like, how much like for the year have you spent on parts, for instance, and he usually doesn't have an idea, right? So what we do is we essentially tell him like. Uh, imagine being able to access, you know, all these service providers. If your pro box breaks down along the way, we have an ecosystem of rescue, you know, service providers. And for us to be able to know where you are at, we essentially need you to have this device that's going to give you way much more information about your vehicle. Uh, in terms of even like something as simple as fuel consumption, how much, you know, you 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 driven for 400 kilometers how much have you spent in terms of fuel for that particular vehicle because what we found out is even the lowest of the like pro box for us we consider pro box a bit you know uh we find out that they want to have that kind of visibility in terms of the data or, or for the repair and maintenance they've been able to do on those particular vehicles so our value proposition is like for pro box users even some of them we give them the devices for free right until they realize the value proposition and they're like oh wait i could actually save you know this huge percentage because all our parts costs are you know like up sub sub subsidies for instance or even the repair like they're able to get like we've had uh we there's something called cut in kenya so we have guys coming from a place called meru that bring into you know they bring in uh a, a type of drug to to the airport so We've had a few customers who've broken down along the way, got a puncture or, or got, you know, hit something and they needed a new vehicle to basically be able to take the vehicle. And we, we were able to get the, the closest garage, which is because it's an Uber for mechanics sort of setup, to the closest garage to go and repair, the, you know, the vehicle and they were able to deliver whatever they wanted to deliver. So when you, when you go back to the customer with the value proposition, they are happy to pay the amount. And our amounts are quite low in terms of, you know, like for 500 shillings, which is $5, the customer is able to access data and also access service providers. Now, if customers are willing to pay that amount. And if you give them, like in Kenya, guys are very peculiar. So if you give them something in terms of like a hardware, they, like they tend to believe, you know, what the solution it is you're offering. So, uh a couple of questions from the audience about compatibility. Um, is it compatible with most vehicles? Is it, um, uh, is it able to diagnose non-ECU related problems? Can you answer, can you address those questions from the audience? 
Yeah, so we, we so far our devices cover up to 90% of all vehicles manufactured from 2000, right? But we also cater for vehicles that are, you know, like manufactured in the 70s. What we do is we have, uh, we have different types of cables that we're able to plug into the vehicle. What we'll not do is pick up ECU data because most of the old vehicles do not have a computer on them. Right. But then what you're able to give is like things like location and then based on your location, you're able to map out uh, any service provider closest to you depending exactly. on where you need the device. So, the so a follow on question to that from another person in the audience was that is this primarily for owners of older vehicles that don't already have dashboard diagnostics? Not really. So this, this works across the board. So you find out, you, you find that um, for most of these uh, service providers, I mean, for, for these vehicles, they, they might have the diagnostics kits pre-installed on the vehicles, right? What they do not have is access to the ecosystem, which is what you're calling like the multi-service and the multi-parts. So you find out that uh, you, you'll have a 2020 BMW X5, right? With all the latest, you know, diagnostics in terms of even, even, even tire pressure. But then what you don't have is a guy who's going to come and actually fix the actual tire pressure. So what we do is for different... We, we segment our customers based on, you know, the type of vehicle you have. That's, that's very key for us. So depending on the type of vehicle you have, you're able to know what kind of solutions you might need on the, on the platform. And you can easily plug in, you know, your, your vehicle to our ecosystem and get, you know, the service or the parts that you require. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Joel, any other, Joel Michael, any other comments uh, from the angels? Uh, just, I'm going to ask you in a very layman context. So what you're saying is um, your device basically tells you not just there's something wrong with your car, but it tells you exactly what's wrong with your car. Is that? So this, this is basically DTC or error codes, right? So if, if, a, if a check engine pops up in a vehicle and your vehicle specific model uh, works with our device, then we'll be able to tell you like, hey, you need to replace your oxygen sensor, for instance, and then we give you even the quotes of the uh, of the parts providers that we have on our platform that have already given us quotes for that, and even give you a quotation for the repair work that is required for that vehicle. Then you make the decision. What happens with guys who, for example, um, if I drive a car, a Ford, and if I have a, a maintenance contract with Ford? and right. I just go there and they fix everything. How are you competing with that market? Because this to me seems like third party uh, service providers versus, you know, nowadays people buy cars with five years uh, service contract or maintenance contract. So how do you compete with that? So I think uh, I'll, I'll go back to the, to the market size, right? So for instance, in Kenya, most of the car owners have to, like we have an eight year limit on the type of cars you can bring into the market, right? So what you get is that in the market, there's a huge segment for, for guys who, who have more than five year old cars, right? And they do not have those kind of contracts. Like if you're buying a brand new vehicle, now what we do is for you, we give you different sort of data in terms of, hey, let's, let's, you know, let's give you reports in terms of how much are you spending in terms of fuel, how's your driving behavior, right? Do you hash brake? Do you you know, turn corners very fast. So we give you more information that, you know, that is incentivized on the insurance side. Well, and that's, that's a different play. And I can show you how the product works. And so so, so there's a related question to that in terms of uh, partnerships. Um, you know, why not partner from uh, Temba uh, Sitole? Uh, why not partner with uh, insurance companies to access more customers? Or even have you pitched Matatu Sakos from uh, Eric Owino? Have you looked at different partnerships uh, that way? Right. Um, so we, the BD side on our end has been a bit uh, crazy. We, we, we have, I think, six Matatu circles that we're talking to, and these are within Nairobi. And that's a conversation that uh, I didn't want to put on the traction slide, but these are conversations that we're having already in terms of the value proposition, right? And then in terms of uh, insurance companies, what the vision for Motiga is essentially to create products for them. Right. So what you're doing right now is building the infrastructure and the ecosystem and the data to be able to like say, okay, can we now, you know, help you curate a different product 
for these particular users based on what you're seeing in the market, right? That's the end goal. So for insurance companies, yes, we are working with one, I think UAP, and uh, I think that will be in the news very soon in terms of them using our telematic solution to be able to provide their customers with much more information and also connect with our ecosystem. Okay. Do, do um, you work with um, vehicles other than, than uh, vehicle or passenger cars, such as trucks and, um, and motorcycles? Yeah, so our, our devices are agnostic, so they're not specific to any type of vehicle. And if I, if I go back to our traction slide, uh, most of these guys are fleet companies, right? Uh, so most of these are like, you know, like they're the, the, the large actors, Mercedes Benz that are trailers that, you know, like large fleets, right? And then if you go to guys like Posta, which is our, you know, parcel delivery platform in Kenya, I think the largest, they have a lot of bikes, you know, motorcycles. And our device works across the board, right? So uh, we are, we are, we are, we could even do ships, for instance. <laughs> so we are not, we are not, we are not tied to, you know, like uh, a type of vehicle or a type of uh, mobility solution. Okay. Well, um, thank you for that answer. Um, over to the angels. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, I mean, I'll just kick off by saying, you know, now, now that, uh, You've been uh, grilled by Vishal successfully and, uh, <laughs> and spoken to your IT really well. I, I was, was going to say, I hope it wasn't too clear before, but I, I like it. I really like it. Um, I, I think it's cool. I think, you know, I think the right, up, right off the bat, I want to find a way for us to partner. I have a really good partnership play. Um, I think we have a really good avenue that you could uh, bring your product into and we can give you some numbers. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think if you, I really wish you could have spoken to more of that company who were your IoT competitor in the competitor picture, that's just a logo. Um, so I, I, I don't know who they are and how sophisticated, sure. uh, but other than that, I like it. Yeah, I do. Great, thank you, Mark. So that means you're gonna take the whole round, right? Is that <laughs> well, well, I'll fight them, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, I'll go next. Um, I, I think it's. I think you've got something for sure. Uh, I have certain areas that I'd like to clarify in terms of, you know, um, does insurance cover everything that your device says uh, is wrong, and to what degree is there like a standard where, you know, uh, maybe the insurance provider would think this is a problem, but it's not necessary at this stage, so we won't cover it. But, you know, I, I I don't know what that is, uh, how that is determined, what the procedure, whatever it is. I'd like to understand better. Uh, it's my lack of knowledge for that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you said you you buy these devices, correct? So you're not you're not manufacturing it yourself. There's no IP. So um, there's an IP. There's an IP. There's an IP. So these are custom manufactured for us by a, an existing uh, manufacturer for tracking solution. But then okay. the the type of you know like the type of hardware the type of the, the technology and the kind of protocols you're able to you know put on the platform that's purely our ip got it okay um look I, i've um i'm working or i've done some work with uh, another startup in a similar space which is uh not not necessarily looking towards uh you know the servicing and the maintenance it's more about the the crisis side of things like you mentioned where if somebody's car just breaks down in the middle of nowhere uh, you know, the, the device automatically calls the nearest uh, maintenance guy to come and assist you, even if you have no data or no connectivity. So um, I'm doing some work with these guys and, and I see a very obvious synergy to a certain degree. Um, what, what fascinates me is the partnerships that you guys have had already. So, so I'm definitely keen on talking more. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Great, thank you for that, Joel. Michelle, what are your thoughts? Old school guy. Interview. Look, um, I, th I think you'll need some work in hand-holding. Uh, the parts and the repair piece, I feel is understated in your presentation. And for me, that's where the money is. The rest for me is a little bit of a window dressing. Uh, I think, 
to be able to scale this, you'll need someone who could work partnerships hard with you. And then the IoT piece, I see Raj on the, on the line as well. He and I have a joint investment in a listed IoT company uh, that we can offer you. So I, I feel that there is, I have some interest and would like a second conversation, but only if I could get post money a million dollars. And if I have a significantly larger discount on a safe note, so I won't accept your convertible note. I'd want my safe note. I'd have a larger discount and I will take the balance of your round and perhaps convince my buddy Raj or Jim to, to join me, but only, only talk to me if you're going to give me post money a million dollars with a significantly larger discount on my safe note. Very clear. And uh, just okay. to respond to your challenge there, I, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you guys take a look at it, especially with Mark involved and, and Joel stays involved and um, decide to move forward with something with a great valuation, such as under a, did you notice under a million dollar post money valuation? Uh, I could be interested as well. And um, Raj is on this call. So speak up if, yes. um, if you're, if you're in. Well, and he and I both, as I said, have this IoT company that's that's ah, going. To, okay. That we can help with technology. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I I'd like to understand the IoT piece. I think you'll see some of the questions I had around the the device itself. I want to understand a little bit about how it works, what the IP is, um, you know, how you fit it, you know, and and just around that piece, right? So I can see the value that you're creating in terms of. You got a device that tells people, you know, what the problem is, but also gets you the, the solution of and at, at, at a cheap cost. And the insurance piece, I think, is really interesting. That if you can if you can actually tie it with insurance, I think that's where you can really scale it, right? Because everybody buys insurance for cars, and if you say, well, if you buy this this piece, actually, your insurance is, is only a little bit more or even cheaper or whatever it is. And I think you could really, really make this make this interesting. Um, so it's definitely worth having a having a look at it. And then, and also from the untapped side, so untapped, uh, we do asset financing and one of, one of the assets that we finance um, it, it are, are vehicles. And that's one of the reasons I asked you the question earlier about motorcycles and other kinds of vehicles. But as a critical part of our model really is the data. So if we have data on the, on the vehicles and where it is, what it's doing, how it's performing, how do we reduce uh, maintenance costs on an ongoing basis? Ultimately, we're managing a lease. So we could be a interesting customer um, slash partner of yours as we roll out um, partnerships with various companies doing vehicle leasing. So let's stay in touch on that. It sounds like uh, there, are, there are a number of different follow-ups with both Vishal and uh, Mark and uh, Joel. Yeah, just just one more just one more thing. I noticed that it's a it's a Kenyan company. So I mean, there's a, there's a, we always have the discussion about you know people wanting to invest in, in local companies as opposed to, you know, sort of perhaps a more favorable jurisdiction. Like, I know you okay, Jim, I know you always like U.S. Delaware C Corps. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> why, by the way, I think it's a conversation to have. Um, and, and, you know, I, and, and in my case, I mean, I'm okay with Delaware, obviously, you know, I, I, I live in the UK, so um, I'm always a bit reluctant to, to invest in local companies just for some of the reasons that, you're all very, very aware of. So there's a structural issue as well. But look, I think it's worth, definitely worth having another conversation around, around the business itself before we get into structural issues. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And this just reiterates, uh, I think there's some great uh, advantages to uh, incorporation. You can, you, obviously you need a local operating company in Kenya, but uh, you know, something to look at really is incorporation in other markets, uh, such as a Delaware C Corp. <laughs> uh, and I mean, and by the way, I think it's it's important to clarify there for American investors, there's some great advantages to uh, investing in a early stage um, uh, C corp. So, I think African uh, companies have the opportunity to think about that and potentially appeal to American investors in that very tax optimized way. On that note, I also want to uh, read off a comment from the from Kira Barker. Uh, from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, love to have a chat with you on possible expansion into this market, Trinidad and Tobago, and the region, and uh, when, they're, when you guys are ready to go international. So feel free to schedule a time with her. 
Great. Well, great. Well, uh, on that note, thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time. And uh, we will uh, have another session next week. I just wanted to note very clearly that next week will be with the Southeast Asia group. And we will be starting at a different Bye. time. I know uh, there's, there was a bit of confusion with this week because of the time. Uh, we will be starting at um, 4 a.m. San Francisco time, lucky me, uh, and um, 7 p.m. Singapore time. So uh, I'm going to do the math on that. I believe that's, um, uh, that's noon British time. So um, please keep that in mind for next week. And then we're going back to a previous schedule which is, or not the previous, but the current schedule of 9 a.m. San Francisco time. So no longer the 10 a.m. San Francisco time uh, or 5, 5 p.m. Uh, London time, 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 6 p.m. Um, Paris time. All right, just to uh, note that. Great. Jim, Max, Jim, Maxime, just one, one sort of logistical question. Actually, this today's event didn't appear in my diary for, for some reason. I could, it completely got off my um, radar and I, I, so I was a bit late as well. And I'm just wondering whether there's a way of, um, you know, sending a diary invite to people who are regulars or, or even people who registered once. You can send a diary invite and then people can just say, click, say no, or click, say maybe or whatever. Then it's in your diary. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, so, so we don't have to go through the, the process of you know, finding it every time. Yeah, thank you for that, yeah. very much for that feedback. I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I think we, we, we usually have a much larger audience. Um, uh, and I think part of the time, part of the problem this time was around the time change. Um, but I think we also have some work to do on our side to improve the registration process and onboarding process. So uh, thank you for that feedback. And on that note, I do hope to see you next week, the week after and the week after that on the nest. And um, yeah, uh, thank you very much all for joining. Thank and you. if you, so you are an entrepreneur, please don't forget, we are accepting applications on our website, findthenest.org. Just send a 30 to, 60, 30 to 60 second video to a WhatsApp number and we'll take a look at your company. And if you're interested in investing in Africa or other frontier markets, please get in touch with us and uh, hopefully we can bring you onto the show. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time. See you next week.